where you will have your monolithic data warehouse sitting at the center all the domains trying to get the data and all of a sudden there are delays there are bottlenecks understanding the requirements because data team is not god they, they are not there to understand every aspect of your business friends i'm pretty sure you might have by now heard the term data mesh it is the latest revolution in the field of data in data industry and it has been coined or you can say invented by zemak degani uh, she is the founder or you can say inventor of data mesh concept and do you do you know how how young it is so it was it was uh, coined in 2019 this whole philosophy was coined in 2019 20 when uh, zemak was working in thoughtworks and now it is picking up now people are realizing its importance and in the next 5 to 10 years you would see that data mesh would form the core bedrock of all your different data architectures and by the way it is not technology only it is also your mindset and philosophy how we think about data okay so it's going to be an interesting session we'll start with a very quick understanding of how it has evolved from a database to data warehouse to data lake and data mesh which will also cover why we needed data mesh then the core philosophies or principles uh, of data mesh and eventually the architecture how the whole data mesh architecture can be set up okay so very interesting me video i am sure after this uh, video you will be able to answer data mesh what is data mesh in your next interview let's get started so traditionally we only had databases relational databases uh, which were all oltp kind of databases we have talked about this at length if you want to understand in more detail go and watch my what is a data warehouse uh, video but to quickly understand in 1960s this whole data warehousing concept came in where we started capturing the data into a centralized location okay and we started collecting data from different sources and then we wanted to do the analytics we wanted to do analytics on this data and that's why we started storing the historical data which was non volatile okay and which was not uh, you know changing with time and that kind of data stayed in the data warehouse and then further reporting started happening with this but then the problem with this was that it was very structured in nature and you had to have a pre defined understanding of what are your reporting requirements and based on that only you used to uh, design your data warehouses which uh, generally used to take years uh, to get deployed friends before we move ahead i would like to take a quick moment to talk about hostman.com a cloud service provider that offers incredible cloud services at very very affordable prices i personally know that cost is a very big concern when it comes to choosing a particular cloud service provider and that's where hostman.com outshines every other cloud provider they offer servers and databases like mongodb redis MySQL databases at just four dollar per month, which is way lower, significantly lower than all the other cloud providers in the market today. If you go to their website hostman.com, you can see all these features and pricing yourself. Also, they offer some additional features for free, which are generally charged on other cloud platforms. For example, if you are using a private network. that is free if you are using a firewall that is also freely offered by hostman along with that if you want to use backup it start just at 0.07 dollar per gigabyte hostman takes pride in its reliable global infrastructure and an exceptional customer support which is there for you 24 cross 7 and they will come back to you in under 15 minutes on an average so this is just fantastic and last but not the least they are offering a 7 day free trial for you to go and explore these services absolutely free absolutely risk free and you will have a free 100 dollar credit so if you are a developer who's looking to deploy his or her code on the cloud if you are a very cool startup looking to launch their very first product using cloud or for that matter if you are an enterprise looking for a long term reliable cloud partner with all these features with all these affordable pricings hostman could be a perfect match for all your cloud needs so if you are interested in exploring more the link is in the description go and check out hostman.com today now back to our video 
so moving on we got into the concept of data lakes and data lakes said that i don't need to understand what kind of data i need to process at the first place so here the concept and the philosophy was etl and here it changed to elt so what basically it does was it said that okay let me first extract and load all the data structured non structured semi structured data into my data lake and then based on my needs i will decide that where i want to take this data next so this this has been our general evolution and now i think we are also getting into data fabric uh, if you want to understand data fabric maybe in some other video we can cover let me know in the comment but this is a generic evolution what has what we have seen now the question arises what data mesh brings new on this table now data mesh actually questions the core philosophy of this evolution i tell you how basically in this evolution what has stayed or what has remained constant is that need of centralized data okay so centralized data managed by a data team set of people who would be managing these data warehouses or data lake and then different business functions different business functions will connect to the, this particular team for their data needs so these are different domains these are different so sales marketing warranty manufacturing finance payroll whatever every company has different domains everyone has to come to the centralized data team uh, for access for getting the data for getting the insights these are your data engineers your data analysts sitting at a centralized team and generally that's why your data analytics and bi teams used to work as a horizontal as a horizontal team sitting across different functions this has been a traditional structure but data mesh questions this because data mesh feels that these domains know their problems these domains know what kind of data they need and also how quickly they need it and generally this centralized data team will not have that level level, uh, level of domain excellence to understand quickly and bring those insights quickly uh, to these domains so instead of this centralized structure data mesh advocates a decentralized way of managing your data which is the core philosophy of data mesh so we'll we'll understand that but to understand that what are the challenges challenge is this centralized data team creates a bottleneck in your whole uh, you know data delivery and data mesh says that you should have decentralized uh, domain based analytics data analytics that's their core principle so now let's understand how this whole thing uh, you know whole data mesh thing works by understanding its core principles and uh, then the architecture so from centralized data team data mesh wants you to be domain driven to move towards the domain move the data towards the source towards the domain not at the centralized location and that's what you see on the left this is our traditional data lake data warehousing setup where you will have your monolithic data warehouse sitting at the center all the domains trying to get the data and all of a sudden there are delays there are bottlenecks understanding the requirements because data team is not god they, they are not there to understand every aspect of your business that's what domain has to do for example uh, it's almost a financial year close in march for example the sales head calls the data team and ask them to connect to the warranty team or the warranty system get the data of all the existing customers who have purchased xyz product from the company and see whether out of those 100 1000 10000 customers who all have not yet taken any kind of warranty claims and they might want to offer a new product to them or might want to give some discount on warranty and try to cross sell a new product to those customers sales team needs it in next one hour it is a financial year close what data team will do data team will have to figure out how to get that kind of a data from warranty they will have to see whether that data is available or not those kind of challenges you know pushed for data mesh to appear 
Data mesh breaks a monolith into microservices. Like in our software development, we are moving to DevOps, we're moving to containers, microservices, breaking a monolith. In a similar way, here the whole monolith is get broken down into different domains. For example, in this particular area, if someone wants to get a report, they have to only get it from the centralized team, regardless of which report they are looking for. But here, because it is a it is a segregated decentralized domain, it will have a data product very specifically curated only for this particular domain. So the business, if they want to get any analytics, it would be very, uh, you know, very, very uh, quick. Similarly, other domains will have their own data products, um, you know, in their own area. And to manage it as a product, you need to have a product owner and then you will also need to have data engineers working within you know within your domain so you will have your own pipelines you know within this particular domain and then there would be an infrastructure team supporting you which we'll understand during our detailed architecture discussion after this but let's understand the core principles the number one we have talked about multiple times domain ownership that's the key everything has to move back to the domains second data as a product for a very long time, data has been an important asset to a company, but they have never treated it as a product. They have always, um, you know, always treated data as an entity, as an enabling thing to help them take better decision. But the moment you think about data as a product, the whole data product life cycle comes into picture. You could envision what you want to see, what is your product roadmap, what kind of new products you want to build around the data you have. So it's a completely different mindset, mindset. And that's what I said, that more than technology, it's your mindset which needs to change when it comes to data mesh. You will have your self-serve data platform. Obviously, these domains need a basic infrastructure. And for that, there will be a team which will provide that infrastructure platform. And then federated governance, because with data, you have to look for compliance, you have to look for security, you have to look for data integrity and all those things. And for that, there will be a federated governance which will sit across all these different domains and there will be global policies applicable uh, to all domains and then there could be some local policies applicable to specific domains. Again, we'll, uh, we'll see that in the architecture diagram. So I hope you understand the basic philosophy of data mesh now. You have to treat it as a product. You have to go and uh, deliver it in a decentralized uh, manner uh, from the domains self-serve data platform and federated governance. So I hope now you have a good understanding of uh, data mesh and now de let's deep dive into its more detailed architecture. Okay, so now let's understand in detail the data mesh architecture. As you can see, there are three main, four main components uh, which you could see in this architecture. One is federated governance, which was our, one of our four principles, uh, you know, a domain driven design data as a product centering everything around data as a product within a domain then there is a self-serve data platform for uh, serving all the technical needs uh, to this particular domain and on the right there is an enabling team now let's understand who does what so basically starting with the domain this is your core domain and this domain will have a centralized data product it will have its own set of operational data originating from the source for example, if it is a sales domain, it will have data coming uh, from your uh, sales applications from where the orders are being booked. And then you will have analytics which can be used by the business. This particular data product, uh, for example, let's see that it is sales analytics. Name this product as sales analytics. Once this product is ready, the product owner of this particular domain will create a data contract. What is a data contract? Data contract outlines what exactly this product contains what all things what all information what all standards it has also how much you need to pay if you have to use it generally these data products are exposed using apis like how we do in microservices similarly we will have apis which will be exposed and if any other domain wants to consume it as you can see they have to read the contract and if they agree they can you know they can use it it will also outline the kind of data, the level of data you have. Sometimes the data uh, maturity is not that much. So you need to say that, okay, this data is not that mature for this particular use case. 
and then this particular domain might be taking something from another domain to build this data product so you need you can imagine these kind of zigzag meshes across domains okay talking to each other you can think of that and that's why it is called data mesh so this sales analytics data product wants to get the data from uh, checkout domain and for customer plus order data okay so this particular data which is in this particular domain we can see it from a different perspective also this architecture can also be seen from a data classification standpoint so whatever you see on the checkout side is more of a source aligned data okay so we can we can say that in a company we will have source aligned data which sits closer to the source now sales analytics is more of a consumer aligned data this is where the producer is producing the data but this is where the consumers are consuming it it is more consumer aligned we want to understand what's happening in sales and then for example this uh, particular domain needs uh, the data the sales analytics data for generating a recommendation model uh, and this come, will come under the classification of aggregate aggregate is a complex stuff mixing uh, you know mixing everything together and aggregating customer 360 for example you are, you want to create a crm dashboard uh, showing the customer journey or 360 customer journey then that also will come under aggregate so you understand this basic construct on the governance this will be a federated governance all your policies security controls documentation compliance privacy everything would be federated across there would be representatives from all the domains sitting in this and then for any you know any request which comes in they will have to validate whether it's a legitimate request whether it should be allowed or not there would be some PII data which is very personal uh, data there would be data which is non-compliant to GDPR all that has to you know has to be controlled by this particular layer on uh, on this on this left side uh, on my left side this is the enabling team obviously if you have to implement data mesh you know these domain teams won't have those capabilities right from the beginning so this would be mere kind of a center of excellence team which will be providing the consultancy best practices examples um, you know for for this particular domain or for all the domains it will sit you know across all the domains and help them you know start their journey uh, building data meshes and at the end the cells of data platform will have you know storage and query engine whatever they want to use as a tool or technology data catalog if they want to see the data like which data resides where what is the maturity all that data catalog can be maintained contract management can be automated for every data uh, there's a contract so that can be uh, you know managed by this team monitoring monitoring can happen policy automation all those kind of things can be done by a cell serve data platform and uh, uh, for example, if this particular uh, domain team wants to use Google Cloud, they might want to use BigQuery engine for their analytics. So they can, you know, they can connect to this self-serve data platform and use it. But your all your data engineers and everyone will sit within the domain. There would be some team managing this data platform. It could be data operations team. Uh, but they, this is where your data product owner, your data engineers will now sit because your extract transform load your raw data will get ingested aggregated transformed within the domains so yeah i think uh, this is uh, this is a very good picture to explain and to you know to to understand what is data mesh i hope by now you know uh, you will have fair understanding of what is a data mesh and uh, yes i i hope that this continues to evolve because i find this particular concept really good really really good it is it is actually it is going to transform the data industry in the coming years and decades so if you are someone who comes from the data background who wants to build your career in data start learning about data meshes okay and this is more on the you know uh, more on the philosophy side of data mesh how we will build it but as we go along we will have the clear reference architecture which can be then utilized uh, by all the you know all the people all the teams all the companies who want to implement data mesh so fantastic concept i hope you learned something from this video if you do please give it a like subscribe comment let me know what you learned from this particular video what you would want to learn next uh, in itk fund day because we make it interesting for everyone guys 
सो हैज बी ऑल से कीप लर्निंग कीप शेयरिंग ऑल योर नॉलेज एंड यस कीप हसलिंग बाय फॉर नाउ